I told at the start of this question that any integer can be expressed in the form 3m plus r, where m is an integer and r is 0, 1, or 2. That's another way of saying that every number is either a multiple of 3, 1 more than a multiple of 3, or 2 more than a multiple of 3. They're just, used, they're just written algebraically. So using that idea, we're going to consider these different values of r and show that the square of any integer cannot be expressed as 2 more than a multiple of 3, where n is an integer. So I'm going to look at three cases. Case 1, r is equal to 0. And then we get 3, that's, so 3m plus r is just going to be 3m in that case. So 3m squared is 9m squared, which, um, which is actually equal to 3 times 3m squared. So not in form. 3m plus 2. Case 2, r is 1, very similar. 3m plus 1, all squared, which will give 9m squared plus 6m plus 1. So 3 times 3m squared plus 2m plus 1. So this is in the form 3n plus 1. Again, not in the, I'm not going to write that again, I'm just going to draw, draw some arrows. Case 3. So for me, this is like, uh, we're doing a direct proof here, but there's also this little hint of exhaustion because we're looking at these three separate cases. Nine m squared plus 12 m plus four. Okay, this one's the most involved. So it's going to be 3 times 3m squared plus 4m. And we could factorise out a 1. Like the, no, sorry, we factorise out 3, but we have a 1 here, and that leaves us a 1. So it's in the form 3m plus 1 again. And it's also, therefore, not in the form 3m plus 2. And that's it. That's all we need to do. We've shown that every integer, you know, it's either, when, when you square it, is either a multiple of 3 or 1 more than a multiple of 3. Therefore, never two more than a multiple of three. Let's write a little conclusion. Now, see, it says to consider the different values of R. Um, so when I did this question, that's what I did. I looked at one, two, and three, but a shout out to actually going straight for 3m plus r. And this is really powerful, especially if there are like 10 cases or something. If you can just do the general case and then substitute r in, it can be a little bit easier. So, so we're going to get 9m squared plus 6rm plus r squared. Um, and then at that point, you can just substitute in r is equal to 0, 1, and 2, and very quickly get 9m squared, 9m squared plus 6m plus 1, and 9m squared plus 12m plus 4. See, by doing the general case, we just we don't have to expand it three times. We just do it once and then substitute in and then make the same conclusion. So I just wanted to talk about that because it is that is the most efficient way of doing that question. Moving on, let's look at part B. We're told that three integers are chosen at random from 1 to 99, and they're not necessarily different, okay, can be repeated. By considering the different values of r, determine the probability that the sum of these three integers is divisible by 3. So it's 1 to 99, and therefore we're going to get 33 of each type. 3m, 3m plus 1, and 3m plus 2. So when we add these together, it's worth maybe just, you know, when you're doing a proof question, it's not a terrible idea just to try some numbers out. So if they were all a multiple of 3, for example, then that's definitely going to remain a multiple of 3. 
if they were one more than a multiple of three, like all of them, then by the time you've added them together three times, you've got an extra little three. And that would give us uh, 21, which also works. If they were two more than a multiple of three, then now we get like an extra three on top of that. So this is um, going to be, sorry, I just made a little mistake. That should have been two more than a multiple of three. So it was three, six, and it should have been 11 here. And that would have given 24. Okay, so we just get this extra three. So you can see the different situations where we can um, get a sum that's a multiple of three. So basically, if we go with zero, zero, zero as our R, that would work. If we go with one, 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 so each number is one more than a multiple of three, that would work. And the two, two, two would as well. My question is, is any other combination going to work? And it, like this gives a bit of insight because we've got, we've managed with when we do one more than a multiple of three to sort of add on this extra one three times. But another way we could have added it on would be if we did a multiple of three and then one more than a multiple of three and then two more than a multiple of three. That would also work because you get this extra, you've got your multiples of three, which stay as multiple of three, and then you've got this extra one and then a two. So what I'm trying to say is that zero, one, two will also work. But for this one, you could also have zero, two, one or two, one, zero. There's, there's many more arrangements. So what we need to do is think about the number of arrangements of three things. And that's actually six factorial. Six, sorry, not six factorial, three factorial, which is six ways of arranging. This is actually linking into the statistics part of the course. If you're not too happy with that, then let's work them out systematically. So keeping the zero at the front, there's two options. Now putting one at the front, there's another two options. Putting two at the front, there's another two options. So those are the six listed. And you could do that if you wanted to. Or you can say, right, I'm picking three things. There's three ways of picking the first number. And then there's two ways of picking the second number because I can't pick the same one because it was zero, one, and two. They're not repeated. And then there's one way of picking the last one. So that gives six. In any case, that's what you've got to realize. So now on to the probability. So for zero, 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 there's going to be, remember we said that there were 33 of each type, which is actually one third of 99. So each one, each number has a one, each number type has a one third chance being picked. And therefore for zero, 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 it's simply going to be one third cubed. But one, one, one is going to be the same and so is two, two, two. So I can just do three times one third cubed. And then for this one, well, we've just said there's six of them. And then again, actually, it's going to be one third cubed. It can be repeated. So I just need to add these up, really. By the way, this is going to be three times a third is just one. So it's going to like one of them is going to cancel out. I'm going to get one over nine. And then over here, uh, again, that's going to sort of happen. But I'm going to get two over nine. And therefore, overall, the probability is going to be three over nine or a third. Okay, nice question here. Links in with the stats part, bit of arrangements, bit of proof. Okay, hope you're happy with that. Thanks for watching.